Good morning. Uh, I, I want to start off to thank everyone for their patience. Spoke about it yesterday. I, I, I know that the uh, suspect's name had kind of made it out into this, this social media world that we live in, uh, and that many of you sat and waited until the official notifications were made uh, before putting that information public. I know it's a difficult thing to do in your position, but as the detectives try to do their very best to work such a uh, big case and work it very quickly, uh, we appreciate your patience in, in allowing us to first be factual and, and to also at the same time look out for the interests of all the surviving family members uh, that are involved all the way around. So I know it's a difficult process. We're going to do our best today to share with you uh, a lot more information, as many facts as we can gather. Um, uh, I've, before I start, I have to, again, from the half of the Sheriff's Office, uh, men and women that work here, part of our agency, and all those represented by the men and women of law enforcement and our county executive who, who, who's been at our side through all, each one of the tragic events we've had in our county, uh, offer our thoughts and prayers to the families and to the victims of yesterday's uh, senseless violence. Um, as I maintained, uh, as we receive confirmed information, we're going to share it to you. So keeping true to that word uh, is, is the purpose of today's uh, press conference. As we step through this to the best of our ability, uh, I know so many people out in the public are looking to make some sense of this. Um, and there's just no way to make sense of something that's so senseless, uh, you know, so it's not, that's not going to be a result of today. There's still a lot of questions that we don't know, and, and frankly, when, when someone uh, does something like this, such violence against other human beings, we're never going to make sense of it or understand it fully, but we're going to give you as many facts as we can. So yesterday at 6.30 a.m., our suspect, a temporary employee uh, assigned to work at Rite Aid for less than two weeks, arrived at work. Uh, she was hired as part of the upstaffing for the holiday season. She entered at 630 through the front door of the business. For reasons unknown, she then left the building at about 721 a.m., returned to her home in Baltimore County, and then drove back to the place, uh, to the Rite Aid warehouse, uh, arriving at the gate at about 835 a.m. She's on the parking lot for some time. There's no camera views of that, but we do know she enters the front door of the building at 8.53 a.m. And at 9.05, she is seen on camera exiting the building through the uh, front reception area, pulling a hooded shirt over her head, and that's when the shooting begins. She shoots her first victim outside uh, before re-entering uh, the business at 9.07. There are some other shots that are fired outside, but they do not hit anyone. She continues shooting inside the building where there's a total of 65 people, uh, employees of Rite Aid, both full-time employees and temporary employees working in the building, firing what we believe to be a total of 13 rounds, injuring five others before finally shooting herself. Today I have the unfortunate and difficult task of releasing the names of those community members who were just going about their daily lives before being a victim in this senseless act of violence. Our deceased uh, individuals, and, and I hope I do their names justice, um, Sunday Aguda, a 45-year-old male uh, who resided in Baltimore County, Brinda, 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 Brinda Bindra Geary, 41-year-old female, also from Baltimore County, who was deceased, and Halen Rays, a 41-year-old female from Baltimore City, who was deceased. These three victims were shot inside the business. The surviving, I, I'm sorry, the first one, I think I said it was a female, did I? I want to be accurate. So Sunday Aguda, 45-year-old male from Baltimore County, he, he was the individual who was shot outside on the parking lot uh, and is deceased. And the two female victims, uh, Geary and Rays, were both shot inside the business. The surviving victims who remain hospitalized uh, this morning, as far as we know, Hassan Mitchell, a 19-year-old male who resided here in, in Hartford County, Wilfredo Villegas, a 45-year-old male from Montgomery County, and Acharya Perna, Perna 45-year-old uh, with an address in New York. The Hartford County Sheriff's Office uh, again received a call at about 9.06 a.m. through the dispatch center. Thursday morning for reports fired at the Rite Aid Distribution Center at 1501 Perryman Road. Uh, immediately deputies, officers, and first responders 
uh, responded to assist any victims and locate the suspect. From the time of dispatch, uh, there were law enforcement assets on scene within five minutes. Among the first responders were members of the Municipal Police Department SWAT team, which had staged uh, close nearby because there was uh, paper to be served that morning, uh, just a fortuitous uh, coincidence. Uh, and they were among the first responders, which uh, the SWAT team is made up of members from the Bel Air, Aberdeen, and Haverty Grace Fire Departments. Uh, and the Aberdeen uh, officers, I believe, were the first to enter the building in an effort to uh, stop the violence and to save lives. Law enforcement, fire and EMS, uh, as they continued to arrive on the scene, were paired with deputies, troopers, and officers in order to get into the building, uh, utilizing the rescue task force model uh, that we have uh, been working with the municipal agencies and working within our agency to implement following the, or just before the advanced granite solution in October of last year uh, is when we started that initiative. Um, and it proved, unfortunately, useful again yesterday. Uh, among the allied agencies, those represented behind me who responded, uh, and, and some who are not here, uh, our federal partners at the FBI, the DEA, uh, alcohol, tobacco, and firearms, our state partners with the state police, uh, Maryland Transportation Authority Police, Natural Resources Police, um, Aberdeen, Bel Air, and Haverty Grace, uh, the local municipal agencies, uh, and even Aberdeen Proving Ground uh, Police Department responded from the post to offer their assistance. The lone female suspect, again, age 26, with a last known address in Baltimore County, uh, died at the hospital from an injury, uh, self-inflicted uh, gunshot wound to the head. Uh, it actually was, uh, from what we have been told by witnesses, it was two shots. The first shot that she took um, was more of a grazing wound, uh, and she actually shot herself a second time. It was for the fatal uh, injury. And that is as reported to us from eyewitnesses at the scene. Uh, the, the weapon used was a Glock 17 9 millimeter. Um, last night, our investigators determined that the handgun le is legally owned and purchased by the suspect in March of this year. A motive for this senseless crime is still under investigation. As I said at the outset, we're not going to find one because there, there's never going to be one. Uh, but overnight, the detectives interviewed family members and friends. Uh, and searched, executed a search warrant at the White Marsh residence of the shooter, uh, looking for some motive or some cause. While no evidence directly uh, related to the shooting was recovered, evidence that the shooter was suffering with a mental illness was identified. Friends and family members relate to detectives that over the last two weeks she had become increasingly agitated and that they were concerned for her well being. As far as the scene, uh, assistance rendered from the Rite Aid Corporation, the Red Cross, and mental health first responders from around the state all responded to provide support to the victims and their families, as well as to our first responders, police, fire, and EMS. Uh, as we know, we are part of a very caring community, as has been put to the test many times before. Uh, and again, they have not let us down today. A community vigil uh, is set for tonight at the Cranberry United Methodist Church and a fund to support the families has been set with the Victoria Russell Foundation Aberdeen Shooting Victims Fund. We're familiar from past events that many times uh, around tragedies, fraudulent um, fundraising efforts pop up. Um, so we, we caution uh, the caring members of our community and of our state that when you are making a donation, um, so many are for good causes, but there are also those out there that are just looking to make a buck on the back of a tragedy. Please make sure that if you're donating that it is a reputable source such as the, the Victoria Russell Foundation, who they assisted us through the uh, incident at Advanced Granite last year. Again, we learned, we learned again uh, yesterday that no community is immune from this type of heinous violence. Uh, Harford County overall is a very safe place to live and work. Uh, citizens should feel confident that your law enforcement professionals, and again, all of the agencies represented behind me, are well trained and prepared to maintain the safety of our community members. Thank you. Um, can I exec to do anything? No, I'm good. Okay. And then uh, I know the county exec's willing to take any questions, and I'm willing to take any questions.
not that uh, that our detectives have been informed about. There was a uh, mention of an incident that uh, involved something about budding in line uh, yesterday morning before she left for work. Uh, and I, I know that there's been some things in the media that she was looking to pick a fight. We, other than this little incident, um, certainly nothing's ever going to justify uh, escalating to this issue. But it didn't seem the type of nature that caused her that much agitation. Yes, okay. Bayview. And then the second question is, uh, did she, in, in the uh, security camera footage, was she aiming towards someone in, when she was walking into the building, or was it more of just shooting anywhere? I, I haven't seen the footage. I mean, it, it, it appears that she was certainly targeting um, individuals, you know, how well she was taken to aim, the, the little bit of footage that I saw myself, um, she was moving pretty quickly, so not taking a lot of time to aim. A total of 13 rounds that we know of were fired, and um, you know, with with that, we have seven people, um, who, six victims, and herself who, who those bullets touched. So, um, you don't have to be highly accurate when you're in close quarters. What about in her social network or did you hear from friends or family that she had problems? And can you tell us a little bit more about the mental? Illness? Well, I don't want to go into specifics about her, her medical condition, but uh, she was um, diagnosed with a uh, mental uh, illness uh, in, I, I don't know if we have the time, 2016. So uh, I'm gonna, that's as far as I'm going to go with it at this point. Right here? Yes. Yeah. Well, that, I, I think the question the question is how the security set up for the Rite Aid facility. The um, they have security, unarmed security on the properties. They own uh, several buildings there, or at least several buildings there. Properties that security is responsible for. Uh, it is uniform, unarmed security. Uh, at the time of the shooting, uh, and to the best of our investigation at this point, there were no uniformed officers over at. 1501 at the building at uh, the site of the event yesterday at that time as far as access to the building um, and again this is preliminary um, but there does not seem to be any controlled access uh, beyond locked doors and stuff but would seem to be open because she chose to begin this shooting at break excuse me break time when the employees had come out from the back and gone outside Sheriff, we have one over here. yes the, the timing of It was before police arrived. We'll get them to you um, after this. We'll get them to we'll you. Put them all out on social media. The spellings of their names and their ages. I'm a little confused on how could, how could she legally purchase a gun if she had mental illness that had been diagnosed. Um, there's quite there's a process, uh, and in my understanding now, the gun was legally purchased even in light of this. Uh, because it didn't meet the standards for a refusal under Maryland law, uh, which is kind of two-pronged. What was the caveat? Correct. It's a, it's, there's a period of um, commitment. I'm going to let Major Davis, Davis, Davis come up and answer for the. Oh, Major Simpson's coming. Oh. In this particular situation, there are two caveats that uh, must be met in order to be prohibited under state law. Both caveats were not met. Uh, one was, and that was she was diagnosed with a mental illness uh, or disorder, as it's called in the law. The second is that she has to show a propensity of violence to herself or others pre-application, uh, which that was not present. We have not been able to determine that that's the situation. Thank you. Oops, thank you. Uh, I, I have not heard that, and that may have well been the case. Certainly, you know, I, um, we have the Harford County Sheriff's Office and, and the allied agencies behind are all um, much more aggressive these days on offering active shooter trainings to our community. 
Uh, in fact, the one of the security officers from uh, Rite Aid was scheduled to go to one of our trainings today or tomorrow? Tomorrow. Um, and, and in the last year alone, we've trained over 7,000 uh, Harford County churches, church leaders, business leaders, community members uh, on active shooter response training. Um, so what we've seen on the video, certainly, you know, under the run, hide, fight model, um, these so many employees, I, I believe it was 65 people that were in the building at the time, um, did just the right thing and, and, and got away from the scene. I, I have, Jane, I have not heard that uh, somebody confronted, but, uh, you know, in, in the traditional active shooter, it's a shame that we have to say such a thing uh, because having a female active shooter is so unusual. But um, in, in the uh, traditional active shooter, you know, we see shooters shoot until they have enough rounds just to end their own life at the end of their own carnage. So, oh, greatly so. Yeah, we were doing some before, but uh, we have greatly increased, and I think that's probably true of any police department probably across the nation. Sheriff, uh, is, is there any evidence or anyone you've interviewed who said that she said anything during this whole encounter? And do you know what her job position was? Did she have a security job position? She did not, and that's something that we've heard out in the rumor mill um, and it's something that detectives have explored. Uh, at one point in time in the past, apparently she has worked as a security officer and had a valid Maryland handgun permit, which expired, I believe it was in May of 2018. Um, she was not employed in any sort of security capacity. Uh, we believe, you know, detectives believe that when that gap where she left work, that she went to the house and retrieved her firearm. Um, and she also brought with her uh, pepper spray and a pair of handcuffs. Uh, that were found on her body, uh, that there was no uh, no fore, forewarning or other than her leaving, there was really nothing unusual said or done by her other than that little thing about butting in line uh, in the morning at 7 o'clock at the initial 6.30 at the initial reporting time. When you say butting in line, can you clarify what you mean? I, I just from what detective just told me, I assume that the process is when they open the doors for the work day that they come through and probably punch in, and that's the way I'm taking it, that when they punch in for work that she cut the line to be in front of other people. Okay. And someone had it. And someone said something. something to her and words were exchanged, but nothing that led to some of the things that we have heard in the press that there was a uh, uh, more of a strong disagreement. Jeff Major. Sheriff, is it true that you guys hold the way to uh, we did. It was not her car that she arrived to work in. Uh, it was uh, uh, a friend's car that she brought to work that day. Uh, we did locate it on the parking lot there, and detectives have towed it to one of our facilities where a search warrant will be executed later. That has not happened yet, so we do not know if there's any other information, um, a note or uh, a phone or something where we can get additional information as to a possible motive. Right. Initial initial responders and uh, Chief Travers here with us. I'll let him see if he has anything additional. But initial responders, she uh, she was already down, and in fact, it was an Aberdeen officer, uh, not knowing that she was a suspect who drug our our shooter out of the warehouse area into another area into an area where they could, you know, try to provide first aid. So she, he actually moved her and she was still alive, leaving the scene, you know, on life support and life, life saving measures, um, leaving the scene. As you know, she died at the hospital. Henry, you have anything additional? Not, not <laughs> we don't have any of the individual officers who were there, but, um, you know, I, I, an absolutely outstanding job. Uh, and as I said, um, no hesitation on the part of law enforcement to, to get into the scene in, in a hope and in an effort to try to stop the shooting, but it had already stopped by her self-inflicted gunshot. I don't know if you've talked to the Rite Aid Distribution Center at all. They don't seem to be releasing any information at this time about the security of the warehouse or what sort of training procedures they've already had in place for their employees. Do you know anything of those procedures quite yet? I, I do not. Uh, I do not. And I, you know, our detectives will be speaking with them. 
I know that they had people on the scene with the county executive and I yesterday, and their main concern, and rightfully so, was the welfare of the victims, uh, the families, the survivors, uh, and that's where their efforts were focused on yesterday. I just think, you know, I, I don't want to say unlucky. I, I just think it's a state of where we are. I think, uh, you know, as, as, a, as a people, uh, we've lost so much respect for human life, what human life means to another person. Uh, or, you know, in general, in our world, it seems to have less and less meaning. What makes a person capable of taking a weapon and, and using it against unarmed, defenseless people, I, it's senseless. We're never going to understand it, and that's what I tried to convey opening up. Um, you know, the, the, the shooters here uh, in, in all three of our tragic events uh, where we lost our deputies in 2016, uh, he was initially from our area but then moved away for the longest time. Uh, of course, the shooter last year was from Delaware and, th and this shooter is from Baltimore County. Uh, you know, unfortunately, we've had uh, our unfair, and I, I pray as the county executive said yesterday, we're never standing here again, uh, but as a, uh, as a society, uh, between the mental health issues, we see it time and time and time again, uh, the mental health issues, and then just the disregard for human life uh, that seems so commonplace across our nation. Yeah, yeah I, I would just add, too, that in all three of these cases, mental illness has been played a large part in all three of these violent uh, attacks in, in Harper County. So, you know, I think we, as we look across the country, too, it's kind of pervasive in a lot of communities and you just don't know when or where uh, this could happen. It just, it's almost like a ticking time bomb uh, and when that mental illness manifests itself into violence. So uh, I know particularly in Hartford County, we're opening a 24 hour mental health crisis center uh, in partnership with University of Maryland where we'll have a 24 seven day a week center where folks can refer and go for help uh, we've launched a civility program uh, teaching parents, uh, family members to be able to identify mental illness and some of the characteristics there because uh, we want to make sure that if we see someone that's having struggles that we can get them help uh, as part of our efforts to stem the tide uh, of violence. And then finally, I think uh, nationally, when you look at mental illness, and the ability uh, for a handgun permits and firearm permits, I, I think that is something definitely uh, that needs to be updated when you look at when and where mental illness was treated, how it is flagged and so forth. Many of our school shootings we see are, are you know, related to mental illness in some uh, shape or fashion. So in a public policy thing nas nationally, that's probably something we need to update or take a look at. And only one last thought as the county executive of speak comes to mind. As I said, you know, there were family members, uh, people close to this individual who had concerns. You know, we stress that message, see something, say something, uh, school safety, you know, that's our, uh, that's our keynote there. You know, the key thing that we try to get out to our community, um, terrorism, drugs. If you see something, say something. In this instance, you know, there were some indicators that people had concerns about. And, you know, you can always what if things to death. But um, we know that uh, the authorities were not notified that they had some concerns. Thank you very much.